Hey, this is Mark Shepard. Welcome to Healing Pastors. Every week, I kind of gather my thoughts and do something I call the Sunday message, where I consider all the things that I did that week as I'm starting a farm, a regenerative agriculture enterprise. And I kind of gather my thoughts and tie it into some kind of a spiritual message that also includes the music that I've been writing since 1976. For me, this integrates three of the great loves of my life, which is music, nature, and raising incredibly good, healthy, clean, toxin-free food, <laughs> as well as attempting to do my small part to be an agent for change in the world in a positive way. And one of the main things that has to change going forward for the human race is how we raise our food. And so I invite you to join me this week as we talk about change. So I'm going to jump into the Sunday message and I'll see you at the end. And there'll be some cute animal pictures, some cute animal videos at the end. And you can always skip to the end if you want. And I'm also doing, speaking of change, I've added uh, YouTube shorts. So I'm making short little videos throughout the week just to kind of show you where I am and what's going on. So if you want to just see the cute animals, do that. If you're here for the spiritual message to get some fuel for the coming week, I highly, highly invite you to stick around, watch the whole thing to the end. And if you like what I do, please obviously subscribe, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below. And I do my best to respond to every comment. And without further ado, let's jump in to the Sunday message. It is November 20th, 2022. So a lot of things stay the same. One of the things I like about farming is that every day there is a routine. The ducks need to be fed and maybe an egg collected. Oh, we have an egg, good. You can tell which one the girl is, right? Look at the boys. They're kind of creamy. She's kind of dirty, evidently, right? She's stressed by the fact that she's female and is putting all this energy into this, right? But that is part of, it's part of the plan. Part of the way the world is, the way things have evolved. Sorry guys, I didn't give you enough in the first batch. There you go. You know, does anybody care about the mealworms? <laughs> what, how does it feel to be a mealworm, you know? <laughs> Got an egg. But the bottom line is, everything changes. Even though things seem to kind of be the same, everything changes. Everything changes. And it's time for a Sunday message. And the thing that keeps popping through me, through me, the thing that keeps coming to me through my experience of this week is change. I mean, it's not even Thanksgiving yet. And we've had a heck of a bunch of snow. And here comes a car, so I better be really careful here. This road hasn't been plowed from last night's snow. We had a couple inches. But it's all about change. Two weeks ago, we were having 70 degree, beautiful Indian summer, indigenous summer weather. And there's a snow plow behind me. <laughs> Just turned into the road, so. And then a week and three days ago, we had a torrential flood, tropical storm. I don't know if it's Isabel or Bertha or Hildegard or Henrietta or whatever her name was, came up the coast and dumped inches and inches of water on us. And then it got cold, just cold. And then we had this whole storm come in from the west and buffalo got like six feet of snow we are not lake effect we're we're kind of out of the shadow of lake ontario so we got snow but we didn't get dumped on dumped on 
but I cannot remember in my lifetime ever having this much snow before Thanksgiving, right? So things are changing. We live on a planet twirling in the midst and the vastness, the vacuum of space. And the fact that we even have any kind of consistent weather at all is, is a miracle. Like the fact that we're even here at all is a miracle. And I want to talk about that. <laughs> I want to talk about that today. There's a guy stopped in front of me here. And one big change for me is I have been able, by overcoming my <laughs> shyness, by being willing to talk to people, and by embracing my father's circle of friends, right, that he's made over 25 years, I've been able to connect with Corey and basically we were collaborating. And that's the biggest change I can express. It's like wonderful. So I've moved my cows and my ewe lamb sheep, my girl sheep over to some land adjacent to Corey's and just in the last, it's only been two weeks. It's only been two weeks and uh, boy, that plow is really bearing down on us. Just looked in my rear room mirror. All right, I better stop. I'll pick this up in a minute. All right, so I'm at the new farm, the new farm. And it's all about change, 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 everything changes there's change for the better and change for the worse right but who decides we decide so if every change is for the better if you just believe that and you asked yourself the question why does this work out better than i could possibly imagine what it does it's not pollyanna thinking it's not like everything is wonderful that's kind of Pollyanna is this, this character who just, you know, no matter what happened, she was always positive, you know, just, and it became kind of something you would say as a, became something you would say kind of as an insult almost like, oh, she's so Pollyanna. But the reality is anything that happens to us in our lives, be it as serious as the death of a loved one, as serious as our own deaths, the fact we, we have been invited here by some force, by some spirit, by some energy, by some something in the universe has caused us to be here, something that we can't even fathom or comprehend. And if we decide that everything is for the good and that we haven't yet seen the benefit of this thing, whatever it is, the benefit of, to put it in the context of this farm, we're actually getting a taste of winter way before we normally do. So it's enabling us to test all our systems. It's enabling us to, you know, see what the cows will, how much snow the cows will tolerate, right? <laughs> where, what's the point where we have to feed hay? And these are things we need to know. For Corey and I, we're both kind of beginners, right? And there's the beginner's mind that you want to cultivate in everything. What if this is good? What if this is good? Is a practice that allows your mind to begin to see the opportunities in the midst of a crisis or chaos. When Donald Trump got elected, a lot of people around me were really sure that it was going to be the, pretty much the end of the world. And 
my contention was never been a big fan of this guy but like the coronavirus tested us this man this sociopath <laughs> this pathological liar is testing like a virus tests your immune system testing our country can we really continue as a democracy right and hopefully we will prevail the spiritual practice in all of this is that winter comes winter goes <laughs> things change the big difference between us as humans and the animals that we care for and raise and then eat is that we can anticipate the future. We can imagine what we don't want to have happen, which is worry, right? Or anxiety, thinking about what you don't want to have happen. And then we can take action to deal with it, to prevent it, to use it in some shape or form. Change will happen. Change happens. It's already happening. A lot of, a lot of people, scientists are saying, hey, you know, the climate is changing. Weather has become more erratic than it has in the past. We're, they're forecasting in 2050, basically 125 degree summer temperatures through the, you know, most of the US in the summer. Oh, my sheep were, were laying down and they've seen me. And I didn't bring any apples because I'm doing the Sunday message, right? We are programmed to like things every day the way we like them. <laughs> That's the animal in us. We want things to be predictable, to be the same. Hi, girls. How's my girls today? How's Friendly Freckles? There's Friendly Freckles. Hello. There's Splatchy. There's Splatchy. Hello. The brown one is Gazelle. Careful, don't touch the, don't touch the nanny. How are you guys doing? <laughs> I really like these girls. So, a week or so ago, my girlfriend Ursula's stepfather, Ron Cleef, passed away after a pretty long struggle with Alzheimer's. And this was a man who meant so much to her, so much to Ursula's mom. A man who was really the best, the best of what a man can be. We live in an age where everybody says, oh, it's toxic masculinity. Ron was not a toxic man. He was kind. He was talented. He was intelligent. He could build anything, could fix anything. And he, he began to lose that. And it's heartbreaking, the fact that we can do so much and then at some point we begin to lose our abilities and seeing that <clears throat> motivates me to record my music because all my life I have been attempting to record my music and that's kind of if that was all I was here to do it would be a pretty full life but it's never been enough I'm gonna go step into these pine trees where there's less wind. It's never been enough to just be a musician because the music that I write is a response to the challenges, to the joys and sorrows of my life. And a while ago, I went into a deep meditational space and the message I got from that 
I didn't hear a voice in the room, but I heard a voice inside that said, Mark, feed my children, feed my children. And that it was very clear. Oh man, look at that. It was very clear that that voice didn't mean just food, right? And just food for children. Everything you see is God's child. Every animal, every tree, every plant, every microorganism, these are God's children. We are God's children, but everything else is too. And my music hopefully feeds your soul. I hope it does. It feeds my soul. And at the risk of seeming like an egotist, I listen, I watch my music videos almost every morning before I get going and almost every night before I go to bed. Because a lot of times the messages in my songs are the songs I need to hear. Just like the messages in these Sunday messages are the messages I need to hear. And the whole idea of raising food and taking exquisite care of the animals that become our food is to serve that greater something. That greater something. Like Christians will call it God or Jesus or the Holy Spirit. Muslims might call it Allah. The Buddhists recognize the Buddha as a teacher, not as a God. But that there is something beyond this. There's something beyond our day-to-day -day struggles that if we incorporate into our spirituality, into our lives in a meaningful way, can turn our difficulties into triumphs. And so in the face of change, in the face of our inevitable losses of loved ones, drive by any graveyard and there are gravestones of people who lived and breathed, laughed and cried a hundred years ago, 50 years ago, a thousand years ago, whatever. We are here temporarily. What are we going to do with it? And that's the biggest question. Whenever I'm faced with a death in my family, a death of someone I know, a death of a loved one, of a friend even, what am I here to do? And I want you to ask this question this week. What am I here to do? Are you here to play video games? Are you here to watch movies? Are you here to eat junk food? Are you here to love? Are you here to listen? Are you here to do something you've always dreamed of doing? And my suggestion is if I were to make a suggestion is start today in some small way. While I was having my coffee this morning, I was thinking about how long this journey has been from looking for myself on YouTube and finding Mark Shepard, the agroforestry guy in Wisconsin. That was about 10 years ago. And I started growing greens in window boxes in my apartment. And then my friend Robin and her husband, Mike, allowed me to grow a garden in their yard. And I did that for, for two years. And then it became clear that I was being moved here to the North Country to, to live with my dad, who is 95. And to see, to see him aging in a healthy way, because he is a health food nut. I mean, he reads constantly about health and nutrition and has for 40 years. Like he knows health and nutrition. He's a, a chemist. So he understands all the scientific stuff that I don't really get. And to see how he is healthy, healthier than most people in their 40s. And yet he's still struggling because he's an amputee. He's struggling with his mobility. And to know that in the end, we all go to the same place. We have to let go of this body. But while we're in the body, 
while we have the strength and the heart to make a difference, to change something in our lives with the intention of it being better. It's time to do it. Like, what are we waiting for? What are you waiting for? It's time. Change is coming. Change is coming. And at one point, I was almost despairing of finding another place to move my cows because they needed to be moved. And I just kept pounding the idea that maybe something better is coming. Maybe something better. I'm going to step into these woods here and see what it's like. And something amazing showed up. I was struggling with being alone, trying to do this. And something amazing showed up and that Corey and I can help each other. Change when we embrace it, when we dare to imagine that whatever this negative thing is in our lives could be better than we could possibly imagine. When we dare to think of the new way of being as possibly as good as or better than we had before. It gives us power. And I want you to have the power, to feel the power that you have to change your mind and to turn anything into a powerful, positive, strengthening experience. And that doesn't mean we don't grieve the ones we love and who have we don't get to see. It doesn't mean we become... Pollyanna, oh, it's all good, it's all good, ha <laughs> No, we need to acknowledge our grief. We need to acknowledge the stages of grieving when we lose someone. The anger, the sadness, the frustration, the hurt, the loneliness. But then, what's the opportunity? What is the opportunity of a new life? A life where you can move on empowered by the compassion in your heart, empowered by the love you had for this person and that you can have for other people and that other people have for you and to know that you make a difference wherever you are, wherever you go in your life. The voice in the darkness said to me, feed my children. And I know I, didn't, I don't have a choice. I got to do this. But I'm also recording my songs. So hopefully that will feed your spirit. And this week, I recorded a song that I wrote around the death of my grandmother, who was a hundred and a half when she passed away. It's called On My Way. And it's dedicated to the memory of Ron Cleef. And it's also dedicated to all of us who have been left behind for the moment, but who will someday take that ultimate journey. It's called I Am On My Way. I'm finally on my way. I've seen my share of beautiful days and I have heard much fine music play. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. So here's the song. Hope you enjoy it. I just recorded it yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yesterday and Friday. It's Sunday today, yesterday and Friday. It's a song I wrote back in 1988, I believe. And it's a simple song. Hope you'll sing along with it. I hope you'll let it be the soundtrack for you this week as you look forward to the changes in your life, the changes in the economy, the changes in the global situation, the changes in the climate, the changes just in the seasons, in the weather, all the different things that change every day to realize that this is part of life. I love you. I think of you often sending out prayers to you, those of you who are, are in need to the lonely to the grieving, to the sad, to the sick, to the joyful, to the healthy, to the young, to the old. Just stretch out your thoughts beyond your own bubble for a moment while the song is playing. And at the very end, I'll share some really cute animal stuff with you and we'll just charge into the next week empowered, inspired hopefully, and fed with the energy, the spirit of whatever it is that animates us, that causes me to do the things I do 
and hopefully to share it with you in a way that empowers and enlightens and inspires and uplifts you because that's my intention peace love grooviness amen i can't turn it off with my glove <laughs> gotta take my glove off to turn it off okay there we go over and out boom Four, five, six, seven, eight. When we walk out in the silence Will we be gone, really gone for sure And when we dance out in the distance Will we find the truth for sure And we are blind and we are lame And we are bold Doubt and shame But in the end No matter who we are We are destined For the stars And I am finally on my way I've seen my share I've seen my share Of beautiful days And I've heard much fine music play I'm on my way, yes I'm on my way We can dance upon dry land We can dance upon the sea And we can dance up in the air And you can dance anytime with me And I am finally My share, I've seen my share of beautiful days, and I've heard much fine music play. I'm on my way, yes, I'm on my way. I've seen my share of beautiful days And I've heard much fine music play I'm on my way Yes, I'm on my way And we become, we become Who we say we are, we say we are And we are you enjoyed that here's some cute animals and uh some uh some adorable beings who we share this planet with enjoy and uh i'll see you next time peace hey girls no i don't have any apples for you i'll be i'll be back later with apples yeah hello 
Are you adorable? Are you cute? Yes, you are. How you doing? Are you digging? Are you digging through and getting some food? What's going on? Huh? What's going on, girls? Yeah. One of the things I adore about sheep is how they follow me around. Yes. Yes, you're beautiful. You're so beautiful. Hey, legs. More legs is really looking good. Well, I see a lot of snow. I don't see a lot of eating, so I'll keep an eye on you guys. I may have to bring you some hay. Okay. Got to go check the cows now. All right, so I broke the ice on their water. And it's not like they're rushing over to drink, so that's at least reassuring. <laughs> and we have a calf right here who's just finished nursing, or keep, is continuing to nurse, so he's not, he or she isn't weaned yet. Pretty big, the mom will wean her. And uh, they have their heads down, they're eating. Even though they told me the other day there was nothing in here for them. They're eating in an area that they had. So that's at least good news. But I moved them, what's today, Sunday? I moved them Friday. I gave them the whole area way, way back in that direction. But think they're okay for the moment. I'll come back again and check them later. And I'm going to go work on the Sunday message, uploading and all that kind of stuff. All right. Peace, love, grooviness, wherever you are. God said, feed my children. I don't know what that means to you, but what would it be like if you made a difference today in your life in some small way at the same time that you did something that you love doing just a question drop it in see what happens all right bye